Hey everyone, welcome back to the channel. You're watching our Cloud School. Today in this video, we are going to talk about another activity type with Azure Data Factory. The activity name is Execute Pipeline. So let's look at the demonstration and I'll give you a walkthrough of using the Execute Pipeline activity. So I'll be using this Azure Data Factory instance for the demonstration. Here on the Authors tab, you will find different Azure Data Factory resources which we have. Now, as we are going to discuss about the execute pipeline activity, which is a special type of activity which can help you making a call to any other pipeline. So let's say if you have a pipeline, which is this one, right? This pipeline is basically making sure that it takes the source file name as an input which you can see that as in parameter, we have a file name and then destination file name as an input. And using these two input, basically make copy a file from source location and which is this parameter and paste or write a file at the destination location, which is this parameter. So basically we have parameterized our pipeline, which and created a pipeline, which have the two parameters of source and the destination file name source and the destination file name and it help us creating or copying the file from one location to other location. Now if I want to utilize this activity resource or activity instance in some of my other activities so that I do not duplicate the effort of defining a copy activity again in the same pipeline or I don't want to perform a repetitive job then what you, I can do is I can make use of the execute pipeline activity. So how do I do that is I'll go to the new pipeline just to show you a demonstration. Let's say this is a pipeline from where I want to make use of the copy pipe, copy file pipeline. Let me just give it a name as in copy file pipeline. Let's say copy file pipeline. So that's let's say the pipeline we want to call from our new pipeline, new pipeline, okay? So what I can do is I can go to the general and here you will find that there is a activity name as an execute pipeline. And here you can specify which pipeline you want to make a call to. So invoke pipeline, select the name of the pipeline which you want to make a call to, let's say copy pipeline. As soon as you select the pipeline which you are invoking, any parameters which are being associated with your source pipeline, it will be available here, which means that you have to provide the values to these parameters, source file name and the destination file name. Let's say that the source file name is going to be this particular file name. I, as we are talking about this CSV as an example, I provide the values in CSV parameter like this. And then destination file name is going to be destination, which I can provide it like random. Okay. And dot CSV. This is a hard coded value, which I've given. But if you look at here, which is this one, add dynamic content. What does it mean here is I can provide a dynamic values to this parameter. Whereas in my previous video, I have mentioned that with the parameters, you cannot provide the dynamic values, which was actually right in a sense that when you declare a value to your parameter, you cannot provide the dynamic value to the parameter while declaring and running it in a debug mode. But if you are using any instance of the parameter, any instance which which has got the parameter, if you use that particular instance, then the value of the parameter you can basically provide as in dynamic content, right? So here you can see that I can make use of this dynamic content and I can provide the value of the parameters dynamically using some kind of other parameters or some system defined parameter. Let's call it as a system data factory name as in the output file name. I want to make use of it and I can call it concat function then then use the data factory name as in concat and then dot csv so any, whatever is the name of your pipeline or whatever is the name of your data factory 
that should be the name of your output file and that will append it by the file extension which is .csv so that's a way to provide an expression or provide a value to your pipeline right coming back to the point that you can make use of this execute pipeline by providing or selecting any pipeline which you may want to make call to and then you have you can provide the value to the parameters if a pipeline has a parameter if i give you another example here i can select different pipeline in this case you can see that it has not got any option to provide a parameter the reason for that is if i open the pipeline one which i'm trying to make a call it has not got any parameters associated with this pipeline hence it is not asking me to provide any parameter if i add a parameter let's say new and then if i go back to our pipeline you would find that the parameter is now immediately available which means that now a pipeline one has got a which means that the pipeline one now has got a dependency on this parameter one so which we have to provide the value of this parameter right so that's another thing just revise if you have a execute pipeline and if a pipeline which you are making call to then and if the pipeline has a dependency on the parameter you have to provide the value of the parameters you can make use of the expressions using the add content add dynamic content whichever number of time you want to use of it so if i'm going to validate it the validation is successfully completed let's debug the run just to show you whether it it runs or not and that will basically copy a file from one location to another location now of course you can make use of some other activities like set variable activities and set the variable or create a variable and then set the variable values like file name and all other things and then you can pass on the set variable activities from here uh, using the dynamic expression like here i go to the expression i'll go to the variable i can provide the value because right now it does not have any variable as such let's say if i create a variable name where new you would find that the value is test and if i just drag and drop go to the pipeline here dynamic content now you find that this variable is available and the value of the variable has been set from this activity and then whatever value has been set from here it will use that value under the parameter of this execute pipeline and i can use it this is just to show you that this is how you can build your logic and you might find the logic has been built like this so our activity is successfully completed which is execute pipeline activity now if i go to the section that you would see that the pipeline activity is making call to this particular pipeline and this is the pipeline run id if i open this run id you would find that this has been run it's been executed so it's going under that particular run and if i again go back to the pipeline if I go inside the monitoring section here, monitor pipeline, you would find that this is the pipeline and we have make a call to. And after that, it has created or invoke a pipeline. This was a manual call. If you look at here, this is a manual call. And from here, it is basically making call to this pipeline, which is this one, right? So that is it about the execute pipeline activity. I hope you found this useful and now you would be able to use the execute pipeline activity in your data factory pipelines. Thanks for watching it. See you in the next video.